Okay, so uh, in this session, we will have Professor Irene Martinez Gamba. Uh, she's a renowned specialist in applied and computational analysis, mathematical and statistical physics, nonlinear kinetic and partial differential equations, Boltzmann operators, and conditional theory. She's professor of mathematics at the University of Texas at Austin, where she holds the WA Tech Moncrief Junior Chair in Computation and Engineering and Sciences Three, <laughs> and she's an Allen Institute member. On the other hand, she has been very involved with the development of the graduate studies at the University of Mar del Plata, her hometown. Irene Gamba is very prolific with close to 130 articles in some of the best journals. It is an honor for me to introduce Irene, who, by the way, finished her undergraduate studies at the University of Buenos Aires by the time I was also a student here. So we shared some beautiful times together here in Buenos Aires and also at different places in different countries over the years. Today, she will speak to us about the mathematics of interacting particle systems by Boltzmann type flows. Okay, Irene. Okay, muchas gracias, Noemi. It's uh, realmente emotional for me to be able to do this um, and somehow painful not to be able to do it in Argentina as I long planned. Um, well, okay. Having said that, it's, uh, it's great that so many friends and colleagues and, and people that not through the years are, are present. And, um, and I'll try to do my best in explaining something that I've been, so I need to share the screen, something that I have been in my heart and in my brain and in my soul uh, in terms of, um, of learning and, and, and knowing about uh, issues that have to do with the, with the Boltzmann equation, which the more I look at it, the more I, 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 I enjoy it, or I'm, I'm you know, uh, trying to, to grow into, into the area. So, so what I chose for today is, is really the mathematics of the Boltzmann equation. And that's what I put it on the title. I will not talk about numerics, uh, and, and, and I thought that this is something that I've been developing in the last few years and comes up into a very mature framework on which we can then expand it to a much broader class, perhaps of models. I, I, I will set some at the end. And, um, and in addition to that, uh, I'm a believer that you can hardly do good numerical methods and numerical analysis if you do not know the analytical properties of the problem you are working on. And, and perhaps that interaction on what I've been doing through years and sometimes blindly trying to compute something without knowing exactly what is the issue with the equation have, have allowed me to, to fully comprehend that the more you need or the more you know about the analysis of a problem, the better the computing that you do is going to be. So, so on that note, I will We'll talk about the mathematics of interacting particle system by Boltzmann types flow, and I'll give you and I'll give you um, uh, the image of Boltzmann that is the individual that I like at that age is when basically between 87, 90, 1887, 1992 is where he developed these amazing contributions, which is what we all know as the Boltzmann equation. So I will I will actually review some of, of, of the things and I will, um, and I will um, explain it in the best uh, possible way. Uh, so, so what is, you know, uh, this lecture is in a sense, it is all about what binary interactions have in common when addresses in under the framework of molecular chaos hypothesis. That, that I will explain, I will say, I will parse all of this as I go into the, into the, um, to the, um, uh, given rise to the Boltzmann statistical flows, as I will explain it in the next slide. But I just let me, let me, because you'll see these diagrams later on, what is this about is, well, this is a classical diagram of elastic particles interacting. That is what physicists have been using for almost all conservative systems, all right? This is 
Um, this will be the inelastic case, which I will not be addressing today, although I worked a lot several years ago, and many of the things we are doing will be extended, although as you will, you will realize later on, maybe uh, there, there are modifications that you can do. But remarkable, remarkable. The, um, the elastic theory extends, or the method of elastic theory will extend to the ones that correspond, for instance, to mixtures, to binary mixtures of gases with different masses. That's just super interesting because that you don't have any longer a scalar Boltzmann equation. You will have a system of Boltzmann equations and yet it can be addressed. So I will go back to this uh, uh, pictures or diagrams. Uh, here, the balls are, are all um, of the same size, but we render differently because we assume different masses. And then the last model, is the it's a, it's a scalar model, but for polyatomic gases. And how the interact now the interaction is not just in three dimensional that happens in a in a in a sphere, but really on a rectangle line on a plane on a sphere. That's what the elastic theory is in three dimensions. The polyatomic gas interaction it raises the space to enter different possibilities or combination of local energies of the space. That's what they are called polyatomic. And that actually forced us to address the Boltzmann flow in this uh, statistical framework with this interaction. And, and I will show you that after, um, after a while, if I have time, it really has shares a lot of the properties like you had for the classical uh, Boltzmann equation. And so I will just try to put in the framework, what are those common features that make it to be so unique? So to start with, I'm going to, give you a perfect, I mean, many of you have seen this slide before because I've been using it for ages because whenever I start with a Boltzmann type flow or Boltzmann time of interaction, all of them share a common framework, which is a derivation of an endpoint probability distribution function given an associated positions in vector, in a, in, in, in a vector of a state and those states can be in any dimension. I call it RD or RN, as you will call Capital N is the number of vectors that you may have it. And they may have MR interactions, binary, triary, you know, quartic, or whatever AMR you want to go. Uh, of course, little m has to be certainly smaller, uh, considerably smaller than the number of particles itself, or vectors associated to that part. And so, the interval, so what characterizes this statistical flow are several things. These are the bullet. The interval between two successive champs are going from before and after the interaction uh, given by a Poisson distribution that usually is uh, the, the, the um, time steps is the quotient between a given constant that quantifies over the number of particles that quantifies how often you sort of clap and allow an interaction and you clap and allow an interaction and you clap and interinteraction. So those are, so in a sense, these are fixed constants. You could actually change time scales. You can do a lot of things and still you can manipulate that started from this type of frame. Uh, then uh, you have another um, characteristic of this statistical flow is that when you switch a state, which is the prime, the the prime to 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 the you know to the to the no prime or so here is it would be the the post to pre on pre to post I'm going to start using the 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 apostrophe in 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 the in the left side of the vector if I refer to pre but the interaction you can always view it from pre to post or post to pre depends on these laws that you have on the interaction which are the diagrams I showed to you in the previous step so if this switching of a state are given by independent matrices or operators. And these operators could actually be, you know, operating measures in the exchange of interactions. Then if for as long as they are time independent, you call this a kinetic evolution of a Markovian process. And that actually, it matters if you do time dependent processes or processes that don't have, uh, have uh, infinite transition probabilities. These switches are the transition probabilities. The, some, some of these answers need to be changed. Uh, then you can actually uh, uh, assert the following. If these evolutions include a birth 
and a death rate. Then the continuous time Markov process gives an integrated forward master equation obeying a Chapman, uh, sorry, a Chapman Komogorov equation for an endpoint probability distribution function f written in strong form is given by this formula. This is, you know, if you go to um, uh, Mark Hatt's books of the analog of probability theory to understand the Boltzmann flows is remarkable in the way it can be framed on what later on it was used by information theory, by all sorts of the dynamics of a stochastic processes that end up with this three characteristics, that they have a kinetic evolution of a Markovian process, Markovian process and uh, with an integrated forward master's equation. It's actually very interesting. And this is how it was reframed, as I said, in a, in a modern framework by Mark Katz, the Boltzmann flow written in a strong form that you will see in a, for binary interactions in a few minutes. So if you write the weak formulation, then the cat master equation arises, and that's how the probabilistic, um, the probabilistic uh, people uh, talks about. And this is a generator of a birth rate process for the balance of probability of birthdays time rate. And that basically is nothing else that in the mathematics framework, we really talk about a weak formulation of any equation that you have, which here is being, um, um, being an, uh, an integral uh, a strong form equation, you do not have integration by parts necessarily, unless you deal with a Gandau equation, we would not be the topic of the day, but I will mention it. But here you get to see that the weak form associated for the Boltzmann, for the, sorry, the, the chapman komogorov equation is simply to do exchange of coordinates in the birth process, in the positive part of the operator, and then exchange the pre-collisions into the post-collision. You, of course, have to have symmetry from pre to post into these Markovian switching matrices. And then you set up here something, this uh, singular measure, I put it as a direct delta measure. What it does, it really localizes the transition law, the interaction law that has to be given to us. So that is going to be the law. What is not the law is the probability on interacting. And that's why this needs to be uh, performed as an integral uh, process, because you are adding up all of these possible states. And in, in you can do it in a finite sum if it would be a discrete, it's, it's a discrete in, in velocity space, or it continues if it is in velocity space um, uh, uh, form. Uh, and that becomes an integral for which you write really this change of coordinates from here to here, where the pre want to be paused and the, uh, the negative contribution remains the same because that is crucial. This negative contribution is crucial for this dynamic. So that is the most important thing to come up. And that is what molecular chaos actually addresses. So uh, the molecular chaos formulation is basically going to set that my endpoint probability distribution function is going to be reduced to a single point distribution uh, function, or by having a sorry by having yes a product of capital N single point probability distribution functions that started with correlated and remain correlated by the flow. I'm not putting it aside from that because you have a lot of things to hear, so you have to. Uh, uh, trust me that the resulting process of making this uh, answer were maybe the only thing to stress the the correlation okay needs to be done in the in the loss operator right and then transport it to the gain right sorry no I'm saying the other way right you do it before the interaction so in the in the in the strong form is done in the in the gain form in the sorry here is in the gain form is in the positive part because a particle doesn't know it is going to be correlated or not after you know before so so sorry the particle does know it has been decorrelated before you collide again 
So this is basically an ANSAT and it's called the molecular chaos hypothesis. And there's a lot of people trying to work on whether that is possible or not given an interaction law or for instance, given entropies. And people in ergodic theory are masters of, of understanding how to uh, uh, reduce this system. Now, the Boltzmann equation, as much as Maxwell, both of them work at the same time. Somehow Maxwell died very young, but both of them came up with the following formulation. In the weak form, and let me start it because it's the simplest way. In the weak form, if I want to have a binary interaction that is going to connect two states through, right, through given V and V star, I'm going to get the V prime and the V prime star, where U is a relative position between the two starting velocities before the interaction, then the weak process becomes exactly in this form, which is that the weak dynamics associated to the uh, probability distribution function for any given test function that makes actually sense for this object. And pretty much the same we do with formulations for PDEs and you want to have compact support and so on. Here you don't need compact support, you need more like integrability, but we'll get there later on. But the fact is that what you get is then something that looks like a convolution except that you're integrating with respect to two variables because here I'm assuming my process was binary and I have single point probability distribution functions that have been reduced for bimolecular chaos on a binary process. So this is the form that you get to see the weak formulation or the form of the Katz master equation for the Boltzmann equation. And what is interesting is that this object is not, as I said, quite a convolution, but we like to call this a double weighted or a double mixing convolutional form because you integrate twice with respect to a weight. And this is a highly oscillatory process in particular for the Boltzmann cases that I want to address because here what you have is the interaction of pre and post by exchange of coordinates right, by exchange of coordinates that depends on the angular variable. And that angular variable is integrated on the sphere. And that actually generates a highly oscillatory way. If you actually compute this weight explicitly, what you can, and when I do the numerics, I explain a lot about that, is full of sync functions. And that is what saves the Boltzmann flow to be a blow up flow. Not only the fact that has an absorption term, but the fact that can be bilinear, right? And can actually have nature, but with this mixing that makes it to become a diffusive, not a diffusive, a dissipative of good, but not as good as diffusion, but that it shares a lot of it. So as I said, molecular chaos is crucial and says the time irreversibility because it's good that the process is going to be conserve mass, momentum, and energy, and then it's reversible. Uh, and um, and it, even though the, um, the, the, sorry, mass, momentum, and energy is enough to have irreversibility. So I could have the same law if I change the primes on the other side. But what actually determines determines the um, the uh, the state of having an irreversible flow was the choice that the molecular chaos was led into the weak form into the post-collisional operate, post-collisional velocities are acting by the pre-collisionalities, this one is slow. We, I mean, you know, both of them, because this, both of them are in the All right, so um, one interesting point is that the collision frequency that also you may make it in terms of U or V star, I put the three of them here, 
actually is, is a fundamental tool because it decodes the properties of the solution uh, analytically as much as the detail balance, as much as the decay rate right here. So, uh, so example one is the linear Boltzmann equation. And the linear Boltzmann equations, these are, it's, a, it's really linear and that is not linearized, it's linear. And these are collisions against the background, collisions against, um, for instance, phonons to know what the probability density is of the way. And that collision, that equation has a property that would have only one conservation law, okay, which is the mass. It cannot support more than one conservation law. Binary interactions can support more, we'll see in a minute. But it has infinitely many entropies that can be monotone functions of the uh, relative bias uh, distribution or unknown with respect to the probability density that is in the kernel. Remember that. So this is a statistical flow. You are really evolving probability density. And then the um, the interesting thing is that when you like. When you look, you know, of the linear flow, it becomes here this a strong form, okay? This is strong form that you have here. No, I didn't write the strong form, but okay, sorry, I didn't write the strong form. But the strong form is going to be simply to write. Um, uh, ah, okay, sorry, this is the strong form. This is the strong form. The with Q operator that come up here. And I use it personally to death in the simulation and analysis of the Boltzmann Poisson system for the modeling of semiconductor devices. And this is what it would be the evolution of the Hamiltonian dynamics along a surface that depends on the energy of wavelength. That was the example one. That's right which is the diagram you saw. I'm not going to go through much details because it's very rich, but you can look at it later on. As the, so so the, why I have this diagram that is crazy is fundamental for the analysis of the Boltzmann equation. And it's all about trying to understand how you're going to manipulate the interchange of state, be binary, be ternary, or be quartic, right? In within the framework of this bilinear chapman komogoro flow written in a strong form, or usually the analysis done written in a weak form. So at the end, we end up using the cat's form always of this flow. So just to say the properties on elastic theory is that you can search center of mass locally and local energies before and after the interactions and you can see this that is equivalent to talk about what is the impact that you get when you do the specular reflection with respect to a framework given by the um what we call the impact direction eta and is that the orthogonal um so component to sorry the parallel component to the uh to the impact direction is reversed while the orthogonal component is conserved. And, um, but this, you know, this is equivalent to this, but remarkable, this is also equivalent to this form. And this is what gives me the interaction of pre and post with respect to the angular variable. This is something that I need to do because I'm going to be integrated this weight or even in the strong form with respect to the angle. So I need to have uh, to be able to manipulate this angle. And so if you look at how we write this angle, and this is usually called center of mass and relative velocity coordinates, and remember this because it will play a crucial role in the analysis that you will see, that is also expressed in this form and you use it as you need it, all right? So what is very interesting is that then you can give all sorts of characterization that the sum of these two vectors is twice the center of, twice the, the center of mass, that's why we call this conservation of center of mass. And the um, and there is another very important property 
that we have this pre and post collisional angles that can be manipulated. These are the impact angle. And we have theta, which is the scattering angle, which is the angle done by the relative velocity u and the one after. And here I call it pause from pre, but this could be also pre from pause and vice versa, because this is a reversible process. But it is important that you took for the Kalman representation of the collisional integral, this diagram become important because you represent the interaction with respect to this variation and this variation that will be the same as the end. So it's a way to do the representation of the integration without it. Okay. All right. So then the classical uh, nonlinear Boltzmann operator becomes now written in a strong form is exactly what you do. You saw in the two previous slides, it's in the weak form and in the strong form. Now you take this very um, kind of um, difficult thing to read. And I have to say that for many years, I, I, that was my starting point until about 10 years ago, I said, that is silly. We never use it except when we do the Kalman representation, except when we do an infinite estimate. And we go back to that just because of, of, of this particular property. The rest of the time, the analysis, as much as the merit can through the weak formulation. So, so this is bread and butter for the understanding of the of it. Okay, one thing to add is that the transition probability, this Markovian process from the cases I'm going to be addressing usually is split into a function, which is uh, for the classical Boltzmann is a function of the, of the scattering angle. This is exactly u dot sigma make the scattering angle. And, and then proportional to a potential whose power comes from the intramolecular potentials calculated from physics. And usually they are from the physics point of view, Call if one if gamma is equals to one is called hard spheres. If gamma is less than um, is positive, is called hard potentials. The analysis I'm going to be do is for gamma up to two because I get it for free and polyatomic gases need it, and so those is in the framework of hard potentials. Gamma equals to zero is Maxwell type of interactions. That is a case in which you have explicit formulas for the Boltzmann equation. And that is um, it's, it's something I worked many years ago with Bobilev and Chorchignani, but I will not talk that I, that, that topic today. Uh, but it's used for a lot for opinion dynamics, for for all sorts of flows where physics may not need it. It's a way to quantify and get the reduced model from the Boltzmann equation. And then um, if you go on 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 potentials that are smaller than zero, they become soft potentials. This is, this is a, a, an area of the unknown. This is the area where people refer at conditional solutions and, and very little is understood up to date. What really is the notion of a solution is a lot of controversial um, issues uh, pending there. And then is the Coulomb potentials, which comes where uh, gamma is minus the dimension. The Boltzmann equation is ill posed. And then you have to go to Landau, but Landau is a question, it's an equation that is still lacks a lot of understanding of the notion of a good solution. It's a very weak form of solutions. And now there is an ongoing work these days in that direction. And maybe it's something is going to come up soon, but I'm, I'm not sure uh, today, I cannot do that. All right, so properties. The Boltzmann equation, the binary equation has three conservation laws. Not just one, like the linear one. You put binary, you get three. And this is interesting because it's mass, momentum, and energy. And that was actually, if you think, go back to history, this is what Boltzmann and what Maxwell tried to do. Fit thermodynamics in the way people view it experimentally at the second part of the 19th century. And they knew that they could, in experiments, conserve mass, momentum, and energy for a closed flow. So a flow that even starts in a in a domain which has periodic boundary conditions in a space, you will actually get the, this approximation to full conservation, or if you do it in all space. Uh, but then something new comes here, and is, do you have an entropy? And the answer is yes. It was found by Boltzmann, um, uh, and that actually uh, is only one that is known. 
And it has two properties. V1 is just the multiplier must be a test function, which is the logarithm. And that will always be the logarithm of the unknown. And that will always be a, post a negative quantity unless you take minus the logarithm that uh, some people talk about what we say entropy minus the entropy. So that becomes obvious. But what is interesting about this is that Boltzmann himself wrote a theorem that basically said that if this quantity is zero, then the log of M must be the, um, the um, a, a must be a Gaussian, okay? And he actually did provide the proof, assuming that the probability density was the solution of this equation was twice differentiable. And, um, and it's a Gaussian distribution in, in velocity space. And he called it Maxwellian because Maxwell said that his equation he wrote in wave form satisfied that property. And so Boltzmann called it Maxwellian and nowadays it's called the Boltzmann Maxwell distribution. Um, and then the, later on, the people understood that there is a relative entropy, which essentially says that if you look at the relative and the entropy evaluated if you multiply by the log of F over M, then that actually has an inequality that also shows that this entropy is greater or equal than zero. And you can prove this is an old slide because by now we know how to do that this goes to zero exponentially. We do not get, you don't get the Gronwell inequality. That's what the church Yani conjecture said is can you get a Gronwell inequality for the, for the entropy? We don't know how to get it yet, but we can get the exponential decay rate and that was some work initiated many years ago by Moore um, and many people that I put up here along the Okay. All right. So, sorry, maybe, maybe we can ask the people, the audience, if they have yes. some question at this time before you continue. Right. So if someone has a question, please yeah. uh, raise your hand or and mute yourself. Maybe you can ask later because I'm still sort of a kind of a long into that. Okay. Okay, yeah. now but I, so maybe uh, 10 15 minutes. I'll ask it again. We, we are uh, in the middle of the talk, yes. Uh, now, right. now, now you, so, you can continue yeah. to the end, so. and then they, they ask questions. Okay, so then, uh, you have the from uh, you can go from the Boltzmann equation to hydrodynamic model by actually testing with polynomial forms to gather what is called moments of the distribution function and actually recover the Euler's equation as much as the compressible Navier-Stokes equations. If you look at, um, at closures that are really Gaussian-like and, and, and nothing else in, 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 a space and veloc in, in velocity space, with Gaussian in velocity space, you would get the Euler's equation. But if it is a Gaussian, uh, a perturbation of a Gaussian in, um, in uh, in velocity space, you can recover the Navier-Stokes equation, the compressible Navier-Stokes system. And that is, again, an area that assumes a lot of collisions. I'm going to skip the Fokker Planck Landau because I want to go further on, but I just want to say that you get this particularly by looking at what is the grazing collision limit, which means that the scattering angle goes to zero. And when the scattering angle goes to zero, what you use is a relationship between you and the distance that, that you get in between the two, um, the two pre and post positions. And then you can do an expansion. That's what Landau did and came up with a weak formulation that it was on, well, Landau came with a strong formulation of the Landau equation, which is this one. Right, which in weak form can be calculated very nicely by doing an expansion on the test function. Again, that I pass it, but it's all coming up from the, the framework of chapman komogov And the same thing on the linearized Boltzmann equation. I bring it to your attention. Some people may be different, has been familiar with it. Uh, in this case, you still have a single entropy. And, um, and what you have though is the uh, fact that you can do um, um, a very nice calculation of the spectral gaps. And it's something I've been 
actually working with my student Cheng Longshang and Bob Strain recently to be able to calculate numerically and to close it, it, a little bit of a, of a, a missing point on the conjecture of ones. Okay, so, um, so, so further properties I skip is the decay rate to equilibrium for spacing homogeneous. But I just wanted to bring your attention to these two cases I want to address. One is the polyatomic gases and the other one is the mixture. How do they relate to the Boltzmann equation? All right, I said in the first slide that they relate a lot. And so let me explain it. Uh, the polyatomic gases, I mean, I don't know if I would have uh, time to go into all these details, but if I do, I'll go later. And this is what with Milana Pavicolic, which we have it posted online and we have, um, we are submitting it now for publication. Okay. So um, the mixture is, is actually uh, different because it's a system of Boltzmann equations and, and I'm, I'm going to present it once I present the very basics of the Boltzmann equation. And because some of you again have heard about it, then I don't need to write, introduce again the Boltzmann equation um, in, 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 in this extent, uh, but this is what I have in the few slides, which I put it as an example. So this is my classical Boltzmann equation written with form and, um, and having the entropy, as I said. So question, how do you solve it? Is it possible to come to solve it? And, and in fact, this was addressed best first by Arkreed, Devillet, Bember, Mischler, and lately we are revisiting it. Why revisiting it? Why is new? What we are doing this? What is new? So what happened at this stage and at this stage was people here assume a lot of um, lot of assumptions on the fact that the transition probability B, the angular function have to be bounded, right? It's in this work, this work, and this work, right? And then, um, and then also Arkerid assumed that the potential, uh, the hard potential with this uh, u to the gamma with gamma positive would grow at infinite as the relative velocity u gets very large had also to be bounded. That was removed in this work, right? And so what we are doing now is revisiting it and removing the fact that b has to be bounded. In fact, b can be integrable and that actually is an asset to gain some sort of regularity in terms of the, of the of the equation, but remarkably was not written the theory of the Boltzmann equation for B. And so this is what we did in this framework and that basically opened a view to many things. So the goal is here to solve the Cauchy problem. I mean, find a uh, um, uh, um, uh, solution to our problem. It's in the space homogeneous. And that is, so, so this is about focusing on the similarities of the collision operator as you solve the flow, and uh, that satisfy some conservation laws that may need to be specified. But essentially, is that mass, momentum, and energy is what I'm going to be discussing first. So, so uh, what is interesting is, is in the proof that we have, we are not going to be using the entropy. The entropy is only needed for the decay rate to equilibrium, and however. Uh, all these proofs needed entropy. So entropy is not a condition for existence, but it is a tool that allow us to get an optimal decay rate to equilibrium. Pretty much like you have nowadays uh, the mass transportation flows. You can have existence without that technique, but optimal decay rate to equilibrium are actually going to be gradient type of things. And so, so the same thing, you, you can draw this analog here. So, so, so the tool that we are going to be using is, is something that was proposed by Bressan in an unpublished set of notes that are, you know, he put it on his website and now the, the people, you can find them, on which he actually said, the Boltzmann equation is nothing else that a Boltzmann is an ODE in a Banach space. It's an ODE in time, but this, the solution has to be viewed in a Banach space. That means you need to operate with norms. So you look at the flow of norms. At this point, I'll ask you to think 
how do you form global inequalities when you are actually doing diffusion theory? You are thinking of a particular functional space and you take you know, the entropy energy estimates, you like to call them. Here we call it moment estimates, but take, you, know, you put the test function, usually depending on the thing, and get an ODE for some norm in a suitable Banach space for which you can say, I have a, a lax Banach theorem, I have uh, you know, uh, coerciveness, and I have all the properties that allow me to understand and decorate that particular um, that particular uh, uh, model. So here, what Bresan says, there are three things you need to check. And this is actually, he pulls it from a book of uh, Martin in the, in the late early 70s or late 70s, sorry. And it's the following. You need to have that your operator has Heuer continuity. It doesn't need to be Lipschitz. If it is not Lipschitz, you need something else to solve because you, you may actually handicap the, um, uh, you, you, have, you need some other condition for existence. And this is replaced by a subtangent condition, which is equivalent to a sort of um, uh, invariant region type of condition. And that is kind of hard to do in Boltzmann. And then a one side ellipsis condition is what gives you uniqueness. So this, is, this, this one, two, three replaces the Picard iteration kind of up estimate if you have, or kind of tool, if you have, um, or a fixed point or a contracted mapping type of argument, if you have a flow, a, a Banach flow um, that, is, um, that is given by an operator that, that is lifted. So, so the, the interesting point here is that Brisson actually articulates this point, the first point very well, right? and articulates the, the subtangent condition misses it. He said it's trivial, but it's really not. And this is what we actually did with, with my former student, Ricardo Alonso. We are cooperating a lot, a lot, a lot these days. And the one side, the Lipschitz condition is a proof that actually was done by Gabriela de Blasio back in the, in the late 80s, uh, 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 interacting with a group of Milano on that. So my, my, my point is that we need to do one, two, three properties, get satisfied. And how do I get that from my Boltzmann flows? And that comes from the following property. First is mixing by angular averaging and control the gain operator in mind. That is super important. And the first part of that is the following. First, identify the energy. And the energy in the right framework Okay, and when you do that identification in a right framework, then the energy here becomes a decomposition of these two objects into the, um, how to say, a convex combination, right? You can see it here. This is, is it sort of a convex combination because these two terms cancel each other. P plus Q is a convex combination, but this objects that cancel must have something proportional to center of mass times the, the, the scattering direction, which is the direction of, of, of the post-collisional velocity, multiplied by a factor that is smaller than one with respect to the energy you want to take. So the energy, remember here, is either the classical energy, which is the sum of the two, or the Lebesgue energy, which is the sum of the objects. And by now, I'm going to be working on the Lebesgue energy from now on, because this is the best framework to get the control of coerciveness and upper bound. Okay, all right. So then once you have that decomposition, you have something that it was called, we used to call it the sharp inequality. inequality. Now we call the angular average, because it's really what it is. And this was developed by, um, so, um, by Bobby Leff, but immediately what you get is that from the, um, the energy identity. And now I'm looking at the, if you look, what is this? Is the positive part of the gain operator. Just the positive part of the gain operator because the test function in between uh, the two variables that depend on the angle because the interchange of V prime and V prime star contains the angle. And this is what we need to control. The mixing, the angular mixing. The loss term is local in the angle. 
I basically don't need it. But here, so, so if, if B is integrable, it's all I need. But if not, the, it was very hard. And in all the proofs uh, earlier, in earlier days, no one, knew, had, no one knew how to handle this uh, object without being bounded. If it is bounded, it's obvious, you pull it out and then this becomes clear. But if not, you have to work more. And indeed, you can show that this object is bounded by this product. This time is generating the energy, the Lebesgue energy times the, the potential flow times a quantity that is going to be bounded by a contact, a constant mu k that is contracted. So mu one is going to be exactly L1 because you have this cancellation, you can prove that easily. And then as mu, as k grows, as the power here grows, mu decays strictly in k. And that was kind of a miracle observation that Bobilev brought to the table in 97 and no one observed until we started to work with him in 94 for the elastic field. So, so then uh, we know that this energy identity induces a convolutional mixture, but also induces dissipation, right? And that means global stability because of the property that you have here. So this is somehow a little bit an analog to the kind of tools you need in lots milgram when you talk about coerciveness. So it is the coerciveness, although there is more to it. Okay, so, so uh, the interesting thing is this decay is not, um, it, you cannot give it a rate if B is in L1, but if B is in LP, P bigger than one, then it has the rate of decay, which is the conjugate of P and then, um, and then you can actually do a very nice uh, manipulation in particular for B in L infinity case like one over K, okay? But if B is in L infinite, you cannot, you know that the case, but without a rate. So if B is in L1. So from there, you can actually obtain the moment uh, recursion formulas. And as I said, the bracket is my, my uh, big bracket. And, um, and I actually uh, come up with uh, a calculation that you use, again, the width form of the collision operator when you are going to be testing with these functions. And when you test with these functions, right? When you test with these functions, then what you get is that you start to pick up the Lebesgue moments, right? Uh, in a binary form that actually comes like a binary uh, sum, right? That, uh, and, 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 and the bounds that we get for this binary sums is the combinatorics of taking uh, K, um, up to K product binary uh, forms. And when you're browsing in between all the, 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 the K values. And so I just put the lowest and the highest because I went to two to the K. For doing the, another uh, trick, we have really to go back and do the, the classical binary um, binomial expansion. And, and then here, what you have is that the loss term pick up something that is proportional to one minus this contracted constant. So that basically means that the existence needs a little bit more than the energy. Because when, when, you, have, um, uh, when you have conservation of energy, mu one, so Kc would be, K would be one, mu one is equal to um, to uh, to um, to L and here actually I should add because I forgot here I should add the L sorry the norm the B L one norm yes. okay and um, and so with that and some other quantities I come up with this manipulation okay that we can split the moment estimates after you, I mean, I have to say you have to invoke monotonicity of, invoke monotonicity of moments, conservation of mass, energy, moment interpolation formula, epsilon Young's inequality. And this is several pages of, of, of estimates, but you get to reduce this ODE, which is in very non-local form into an ODE on the moments of the collision operator right, which actually have a positive term minus a term 
and with a positive constant, and now this is what we call the coercive constant, which is calculated from all the estimates that come from the moment's estimate, proportional to the unknown to a superlinear form. And the superlinear form that we get here, so is here, M1 is conserved, so it's what I said here, right? And so the superlinear form that comes here provide us two fundamental properties. One is that, and here is, the moments will propagate. This is an, so here what you have an ordinary differential inequality. So you may not expect to have explicit bounds, right? explicit solution. What you can do is to have super solutions for the OD and compare with the super solutions. And so this is exactly what we do. We manipulate super solutions to this equation, which is remarkable. This doesn't have an, a formula. If I would put here MK1, then it's a Bernoulli equation and has it, but this one does not. Never mind. You manipulate it with super solutions, and then we obtain the propagation of, uh, of moments. But remarkably, we always can generate moments. And the generation of moments is actually very interesting because what you have here is that you pick up from this equation, you said, well, my initial data now has as, as many moments as need for the existence. So it has to be a little bit more than one because the existence required this. I mean, I, I, I cannot go through the details, but you need more than one. I mean, for, for one along, you, um, you don't have enough weight to secure that the, the solution will actually remain tight in order to get lower bounds. Something else needs to be said. It's like saying, you know, I know a little bit more about the energy, but, but, it, but this infinitesimal, and of course, this estimates that generate without, without um, estimate, without the uh, cost. But, but if I have this little, part, little bit of, uh, of energy, then what I have is that the generation says that even if I start with a few moments, I can generate any moment. So this is it's a sort of Nash inequality type, type of Nash Moser inequality, right? Or the Georgie Nash Moser type of inequality that you can start with little and gain. And what you can see in this particular case that this gain degenerates at zero, right? At time equals to zero. And that is to be expected because you cannot say that if you start it with three moments at zero, you are going to cut to certain moments as, as, as I go to zero. And so that is an expected uh, calculation. And this is the, the comment that comes up here. So um, there, the proof actually of the Cauchy equation is to check the steps that we did by using the one, three, one, two, and three properties of the, of the statement of the, of the uh, theorem of, of the Boltzmann equation of Banach spaces, of the ODE flows on Banach spaces. And that actually is enough. I mean, perhaps the most interesting part is to prove is this proof, but I don't have time to go to that and I'm showing what I wanted to, to, to show you. But the important point is that after using all these properties, we get that indeed our solution is going to be continuous in, in, um, in time and L1 to plus in a space or differentiable in time. And then you go into L1 K in a space for um, any K moment. It's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting regularity property, but that's exactly what comes from the balance space. So, so in, 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 and, and in particular, the conservation laws are satisfied and we did not use the entry. LP theory, can you do it? Well, the LP theory is a slightly different because when you actually start to do the manipulation of LP norms, that can be done, right? And that is something that we, we work with Ricardo Alonso in the gain of integrability estimates. We can do an ODE of this form. So now, right? Sorry, now here is for the LP. So this is for the L1K. So you can get a constant with a super linear. For the LP, the best you can get is here, linear with something that is sublinear. But in fact, now we realize with Ricardo, we can actually move it into the fact that this, we can estimate it from all by interpolating with respect to this value and end up really with an equation of this form, but with a linear term. Then again, 
because you have the moments, um, the, the, you have at, 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 at this point, you have the existence, you have the L1 K theory for any K. That means you can actually go to any LP theory or LR theory for any R provided that you have this, um, this response which was the one that introduced this and you no know, one has actually been improved. He uses vinyl infinite and also uses uh, a surgery on the, on the angular cross-section that he has to cut or don't need to do that. But yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, let me finish. I wrap up in, in, in three minutes. So the, the, the Poincare constant does not need the diffusion equation. It needs only the Banach space, same thing here. This is in the Banach space that I characterize here, right, is where we do have with, with the characterization of this function. And that gives us enough to do the calculation, what we need of the NP theory in B integrable by splitting the energy. So the extensions to the flow for gas mixtures, let me say the following thing. The, uh, the system of equations is, um, is arbitrary. Uh, the diagrams are, um, the, the, the interaction is elastic locally, but it has masses. And so what changes is the conservation of mass and, 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 and momentum and energy that are global, which means they have to have all the, um, all the quantities. And this is exactly how we actually write the weak formulation and we get the, uh, the conservation properties and the entropy. So if I have that and I have the moment estimate, right, with the, lower bound and the right Banach space, then I can do existence. And this is what we did with Milano Code. And so here, what we are is the, we have to form, what is the Banach weight? It cannot be arbitrary. It cannot be the same one. It cannot even be weighted relative to one species. You have to weight it with respect to all species. And that actually gave us the tool to end up also the lower bound lemma we could do it, the lower bound lemma does not depend on the collision operator, depends on the Banach space. It's the same property. And once you have that, then you can generate moment estimates, okay? They generate the identity, the energy identity, we obtain it. And we were able to calculate the moment estimates, okay? And it's exactly this quantity, all right? And we were able to do a vector value solution. Because this, the operator, when you see it with this symbol, is a vector value operator because you are dealing with a system of port manipulation. Excuse okay? me, Rene. Yeah, you, you have to, to I have to stop. Okay, so let me say that the same thing happens for polyatomics. Trust me, you can see the preprint, it's online. Uh, the LP theory is done with Erika de la Canal and some of the current and future projects, uh, the LP theory for mixtures done with Erika de la Canal and the future projects are on the way and there are a lot of interesting stuff that we can do, like a, a sobel of regularity, decay rate to equilibrium and improve it. And, and all the estimates uh, that I didn't mention, uh, perhaps the most important is the exponential tails that can be really calculated with respect to, the, to this bounds and the coercive constant that we did for that. Okay. With that, I finish, and I thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you, Rene. Thank you yes. very much. Uh, unfortunately, there's no time for questions. I've been yes. told that we have. To I mean, I can tomorrow. stay for the people that wants to stay, or can move to another room if there is anyone that wants to ask questions. Okay, uh, but the talk will will be online, so then people can talk to you. Okay. okay.